What's going on, everybody? We want to welcome you to another edition of Unscripted Faith. We are so honored that you've led us into your home. I want you to keep it locked for the next 30 minutes because we've got a great show for you today. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert, alongside with Angela Madden. Yes, welcome. We are so glad to have you guys. Today, we're going to get an opportunity, Jay, to sit down with a good friend of Cornerstone yes. and talk about meaningful relationships. And I think really dive into this idea of conflict resolution because you can't have meaningful relationships without it but everybody right. wants to avoid it. That's right. So I think we're going to get to go there, talk about values and, and her newest book, uh, Baseball Family. I'm super excited. What about raising kids? Yes. Critical thinking. Yes. And uh, tell me a little bit about the fishbowl question at the end that we might talk about, because oh. I know you're a coach, so oh, give yeah. a little tease yeah, of what's honey, coming up. Yeah, you know, in this coaching world, we, you know, you go onto a ball field and parents lose their mind. You they talk to them, you're like, oh, Sally, she is just so sweet. And she is so, and then, honey, it's the third inning and she's going nuts on the coaches, on the umpires. <laughs> so we'll get to talk with maybe someone who's got quite a bit of experience on that. And She definitely does, and we're so honored to have her. And our guest standing on deck is a baseball wife and mom and author who knows how to cultivate community on and off of the field. Billy Jouse steps up to the plate on Unscripted Faith as she shares about the value of relationships and why she says life is a whole lot like baseball. Billy, it's so great to have you with us here on Unscripted Faith. Oh my goodness, it's so great to be with you guys again. <laughs> Billy, we love having you. I love every time we get to sit down and talk and you are a true baseball family. So your husband has been in the MLB for how many years, Billy? 37. This is our 37th wow. baseball season in professional baseball. Wow. 37 years. And now all three children are following in his footsteps in baseball. Yeah, you know, you pray to the Lord for your children's future and all that God has for them. And you want you want the Lord's will to be done in their lives until they all three say, hey, mom, we're going to stay in baseball. And then <laughs> you got to get on your knees and start praying for those future wives because baseball life can be a little crazy. So our oldest is an area scout. Our middle one is a mental performance coach, both in professional baseball. And then our youngest son's actually the pitching coach at Penn State. Wow. wow. Well, Billy, how do you stay saved? Yeah. <laughs> all those years dealing with all that wildness. Let me tell you, close to Jesus, you got to hang on to that hymn and let him drag you along because sometimes you just feel like you can't stand up. So you just got to be drugged by him through some of it. And then when you can get your feet grounded, it's all grounded on Jesus. Now, you talk about how life is a lot like baseball. What do you feel? I know there's many, many different places and ways you can explain that, but what is that overarching theme, and how could our viewers understand life better through baseball? You know, the thing that I always go back to is relationships. How do we cultivate healthy relationships? And baseball has taught me that in so many ways because God has put me in places that I never dreamed that I would be, that my husband would be, that my kids would be. And then he's placed people in front of me that he wants me to love when I don't think they're so lovable or I'm not feeling like loving on other people. And all of that translates into how do we cultivate relationships every day of our life with the people that God places in front of us that may not look like us, speak like us, believe like us, live like us, and maybe not even vote like us. But what does God tell us to do? He calls us to love one another so that they know we're his disciples. And so I feel like in baseball, because we're surrounded by so many different people on a daily basis for all, you know 162 games a year in the big leagues or in minor leagues, a few less, but not that much less, just it's the same as going throughout life with the people that we're surrounded with every day. You know, Billy, uh, I've always used this analogy. I tell people all the time that uh, in every family, there's one family member that you don't like and wish never come to the reunion, come to the family picnic. And if they say, oh, I don't have anybody, I said, you're probably that person. You're probably the <laughs> one that nobody wants at the party. Because sure. there's always some family yeah. member that gets on your nerves or whatever it might be. But give us some insight into you. What, what's it like dealing with family, dealing with people? And how, give us some stories, some backlight on uh, what's happened with some of those. 
Yeah, you know, I look at baseball as our family. That's who we're around the most. That's who we're connecting with. That's who we don't get to choose to be with. It's yeah. not blood family <laughs> where you, you don't get it. It is, you know, they're not blood family, but they're like blood family. You don't get to choose who your blood family is, right? In baseball, we don't get to choose who's going to sit in the stands with us as wives. And I had a wife say to me one time, she's like, I really don't want to sit with you at games. And I'm like, why not? She goes, because that person that nobody wants to sit with inevitably ends up beside you. And that's just hard. And I call those people sandpaper people. And those sandpaper people grind on your ever living last nerve. But is it because of their behavior that's grinding on you? Or is it something that the Lord really wants to work on within you? And that's where you look at those situations, not as completely negative. It's not a time to discuss discuss deep opinions and deep values and deep. That's a time to get to know the other person. Why are they edgy? Why are they angry? Why are they complaining? And not allow them, love them where they are, but not allow them to stay where they are. Love them through where they are to a place that's more um, relatable that people don't mind being around them. But yes, in baseball, I actually had a wife for quite a few years with one team that every time I walked by her, she had something critical to say about me. Oh, you need to get your hair done. Your roots are shining through. Oh, you're wearing those jeans. You're not wearing high heels today. Why are wow. you? Not? Every wow. day I was around her and I just chose to love her where she was. I didn't spend extended time with her. I didn't travel with her. I didn't do things. I didn't trust her with deep emotions. I just related to her where she was and the way she was. And I loved on her. And I will tell you over time, I had more wives on that team, girlfriends on that team, workers at that stadium say to me, why are you so nice to her? She just seems to want to pick out all the little stuff about you. And some of it was pretty gut-wrenching. Like it hit me in that raw spot that maybe past history had taught me negative lessons or someone had treated me horribly. But God kept saying, just love her where she is. Just love her where she is. And did I want to? Oh, no. I wanted to pull out some bad behaviors and, you know, and, and not be nice and say some hurtful words to her. But I kept choosing to love her. And there were so many women that came up and said, why did you do it? And I was able to point them to Jesus. So how did that story turn out real quickly? I'm just curious. I mean, it, it, did she change? Did it just change you? What happened? Yeah, she really didn't change. Um, she, she didn't. We ended up, David and I ended up leaving, going to a different team, you know, the relationship didn't go any deeper than it was. It's a very topical relationship, um, still with some social media contact, but she really didn't change a whole lot towards me. And I have, you have to learn at times that sometimes you will never change that other person. Sometimes that other person will never choose for Jesus to change them. And they may identify as Christian. Wow. But they don't choose to step into where God is calling them to love one another, to be kind, to be a trustworthy person, to show respect. And you still have to because that's what God's called you to. So those sandpaper people, sometimes the grit on that sandpaper gets a little harsher. It doesn't always get to the refining point <clears throat> in them, but you can allow the Lord to work in you. You learn to create boundaries. You learn to not retaliate you actually learn to respond rather than retaliate you can really use a lot of the characteristics that god calls you to use with those people but then you have your dear friends that you can turn to and go man that woman makes me mad i, I just want to punch her and <laughs> then you move on you don't actually do it but you have that close friend that you can say and that was my husband most nights of hey I'm really aggravated by this. And he's like, you're handling it great. I'm so proud of you the way you're handling it. You're loving her rather than retaliating to what she's saying. 
Well, that's how God uses sandpaper, people, to grind down those rough edges, smooth them out. And uh, listen, we want you to stay put because we've got more to talk with you about. I want to go into talking about critical thinking, raising our children, and what that was like for you. Ladies and gentlemen, more coming up with Billy Joust in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this break. With our thanks for your generous gift this month, request your 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar when you give in support of Cornerstone Television Network. Inside the calendar, you'll discover stunning photos of sites in the land of Israel that have been vital to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, find encouragement through Scripture, reminding us of God's faithfulness in the midst of struggle. The 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar features beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, room to track important dates, American and Jewish holidays, and a victory scripture for every month. Thank you in advance. Your partnership allows us to reach the lost through Christian television, provide our 24-7 prayer line, and support outreach to widows, orphans, and more. To request your calendar, call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome to Dashy Nish. If the thought of company coming over makes you freak out inside, no need to fear. Today I'm sharing recipes that your family and friends are sure to love and they're super easy to make. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV, bringing you programs like... Instead of believing that you're sitting at a red light and you're waiting on God to give you the green light to go do something, instead you ought to look that you've got the green light to go into all the world and preach the gospel and you just ought to be looking in case He puts a red light up and tells you to stop. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. If you're just joining us, you are in for a powerful conversation. We're sitting talking with Billy Joust. And Billy, you said before the break, sand, sandpaper people. <laughs> and it's not about them and allowing what their issues are or maybe even direct insults to you, but it's allow allowing them to take off the edges in us. Can you share with us a little bit about how in these moments we can take triggers this is a word our culture uses all the time. Oh, that person triggers me. How we can take those triggers and turn them into character like Christ. Yeah, you know, it, trigger, It's that's really, <laughs> to me, when we allow ourselves to react to people saying, oh, they triggered me, we're lacking the self-discipline that Christ has given us, right? I remember raising my children. My children are adults now. They have adult jobs. My husband and I actually sat on the couch yesterday and talked about how proud we were of our kids because of the refinement they have in being able to do the jobs they have now, right? When we allow other people to trigger us, we're just letting down our guard as Christians. We're letting down all the characteristics that the Lord is teaching us and blaming it on someone else rather than saying, you know what, even though they don't deserve respect, I'm going to show them respect. Even though they aren't trustworthy, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be trustworthy. Just because they aren't loving me doesn't mean that I'm not going to love them. It just means that that person is not going to be someone that I'm going to give my deepest, darkest secrets to. I'm going to tell my life story to. I'm going to open up my heart for them. No, I'm going to create boundaries. I'm going to put them in a bucket of people that I have to encounter. And this could be someone you work with, another mom or dad on a, on a sports team your kid's with, a parent that you see in line waiting for your kid to pick your kids up at school. It could be almost anyone, someone that works at an establishment you go to, the grocery store, the, the, the pharmacy, whatever it is. We can encounter these people anywhere, but we have to understand in those moments that this is a very specific time and place that the Lord has taken us 
for us to show that person that we actually follow Christ. Because I don't know about you, but I think a lot of times people point at people and say, well, I don't want to follow Jesus if that's what Mm -hmm. Christians are like. Christians are the hardest people to be around. Christians are explosive. I've heard a lot of this over the years. So why don't we be the opposite and actually be who Jesus is and love on others no matter how they treat us? but making sure that they're not infiltrating those boundaries that we put around ourselves. You know, Billy, I think a lot of times when people talk about they have triggers, they haven't learned how to think for themselves. Uh, They have a rough time being able to do that. So I tell people they're great landlords, uh, that people just come in there and drop into their minds and just run all sorts of controls and things along that line. But let me shift a little bit with that. Uh, Raising children, you know, a lot of times if we keep our kids in a bubble, uh, we see that so often kids are raised in a Christian home. They only go to church. Su- they go to church Sunday through Saturday. They don't go anywhere, can't go to the movies. Then they go to school and they lose their minds. When you were raising your children, how did you teach your kids to critically think so when they left you, they knew how to make good decisions? Well, for us, we were around about 35 to 40,000 people a night, right? Wow. I, my kids never lived in a true bubble even though we homeschooled, even though we went to church Sunday through Saturday, wherever we were. I mean, even though my kids were exposed to things that a lot of kids aren't. And I Mm. feel like that gave my kids the opportunity to see things, but also for me, the opportunity to say, hey, this isn't the way that we believe. I had to teach them about things like evolution and things that are contrary to Christian beliefs because I wanted them to have a foundation of this is what people are saying, but this is how we believe as Christians. This is why we believe it. I wanted them to dig into the word so that in the word they saw in the beginning, God, That's right. I wanted them to know that. And were there struggles with my kids over the years? Yes. But were there times that we were able to teach them that they're going to love the janitor who may be an atheist just as much as they do the big league, big name player who goes to baseball chapel every Sunday or to love the lady that works at the beer stand who's a Christian just as much as they're going to love the manager of the team, that they need to, to understand where that person's coming from and not judge and not criticize and not condemn and surely not box out. Do not turn your back to people just because they don't believe like you, look like you, speak like you. You lean into those situations. You understand who they are. You love them where they are, like I said before, but you don't leave them there. You tell them what you believe as a relationship grows with them. But when you're in those, you know, those quick interactions with people, you don't have to change their belief. You just have to be who God's called you to be. As a relationship grows, then you can lean into that. And that's, I think, teaching our children to critically think, understanding the Bible, but also understanding what those concepts are. It helps them to discern it over time. That is so powerful. And I really hope everybody's got listening ears on (laughs) because especially in an election year and everyone's throwing out all their opinions that our role, like you said, so beautiful is just to love them, not necessarily change their belief. Billy, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you guys. I truly, truly, you guys feel like part of my baseball family. We were with the Pirates for nine seasons and I just thank you guys so much for all that you do. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. And hopefully you choose us for your family. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Thank you, Billy. Well, let's take a moment and check out this week's edition of Ask Amy as she offers some great advice for college students who want to remain strong in their faith. Let's find out what Amy has to say. Doors are opening and doors are closing all over the world. It is that season. College students are going back to school. They're in their first days of school. They're saying goodbye to mom, goodbye to dad, goodbye home. And they're entering a whole new world of 
freedom. So today on Ask Amy, the question is from a college student. I'm headed to college. How do I stay strong in my faith and not become one of those statistics? The statistics where you walk away from your faith when you go to college. Well, let me give you a few thoughts and a few scriptures. Number one, this is the most important. Be picky with your clicky. Who are your friends? Show me your friends and I'm going to show you your future. You get with the right group, with the right friends. It could make you or it could break you. It's all about friends in this season. Number two, get connected in school to a faith group, to a Bible study. Go to a local church. Maybe there's a campus ministry. Make sure you are in the right room with the right people who are stirring up your faith. Number three, do not forget about your fruits and your roots. Please remember that you do have a spirit of self-control. You don't have to go college and go crazy. You can actually have joy and peace and discipline and self-restraint and self-control. And I believe that you can win in life. So number one, first Corinthians says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. My mom used to wave goodbye to me as I went to school. Bad company corrupts good morals. And I'm like, great. Now I, I have to obey the word and I have to obey the Lord and I have to have the right friends. But it's true. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you, college student. I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. And also remember, college students, Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, just pray and ask God and he will show you, he will guide you and he will lead you. And also remember Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for hope and a future for your life. So you don't have to have it all figured out right now. And I want to leave you with these words from a president of Oral Roberts University. He said this is so brilliant. He said, college students, God's hand is on your life and the power of the Holy Spirit rests upon you. You will not be overwhelmed. You will not be deterred. You will not quit. You will not stop and you will not fail. Instead, you will persist, you will endure, you will succeed, you will finish well, and you will accomplish the purpose of God on your life. Now, go and change the world. Yes, college student, you can change the world. And listen, mom, dad, grandma, you can instill these truths into your children, into your grandchildren right now. Jay, I think as even Amy was sharing and Billy, this idea of getting our children to critically think and engage in the world while also maintaining that really devout space of faith, but bringing in that balance so they can exist in college and hold on to their faith. Yeah, you know, you kind of get that. I think about, you ever watched The Water Boy that was Adam no. Sandler? Well, it's basically a story about this guy that's, you know, he's kind of got like a little learning disability, okay. but it's a humor. Okay. And, uh, and he comes on and everything is the devil. His mother tells him everything is the devil. So <laughs> girls are the devil. Football, she called it foosball. If you watch it, <laughs> foosball is the devil. And all these things, right? So eventually he goes through this whole process. He's so sheltered that he even gives answers in mm -hmm. public that people are kind of like, because he's, he's in college, right? And so then this professor says, uh, where does happiness come from? He said, happiness, mama said, happiness comes from uh, sun, rays of sunshine come down when you're feeling blue. And he says, where does it, he said, it comes from the medulla oblongata. Like they're talking, and that's all he knew because yeah. he had lived inside of that bubble. I'm saying all that to say that if we don't teach our children and expose them to things, yes. that they see things and know how to think, they'll live in fear. Yes. Everything's the devil. Everything's wrong. Yes. You're going to go to hell. You're going to do it. Eventually, they're going to get out there in the world and they're going to see all of this stuff that's happening. That's and they're right. not going to know how to make wise choices yes. because we didn't give them the ability as they're growing up to make educated decisions. What yes. music should I listen to? What type of friends should I have? Why? So they're going to let them be around yes. and not, not intentionally, but they're going to expose themselves just naturally to yes. bad relationships. Well, how do we then say, okay, 
Why isn't this person good? Let's yes. talk about that yes. and then kind of go from there. Yeah, I love that because as Billy said, you know, her kids were homeschooled and yet they were around 40,000 people on the regular in these stadiums. And so you have to learn how to navigate That's life right. and not live such a segregated and compartmentalized life. To me, one of the terms that I've become very familiar with um, and that we are trying to raise our kids is an integrated life. Yeah. So it is in every space our faith is wove. In every space I should be able to see Christ's character. In every moment I should be able to engage the world while bringing the gospel, right. which may not be with words. You right. know, Jay, I'm a coach on a softball field, on basketball yeah. teams, yep. and that's one of, I think, the biggest principles that I try to bring to the, the girls on the field is like this softball game, this is life. Yeah, that's me coaching. Right there. Yeah, coaching these girls and, and trying to get everything in them. But I teach them that like we're playing softball and we're doing these things, but it's not about the softball field. It's about what we're taking away from the basketball court. It's it's what we're learning that applies to life. Yeah. You know, this isn't just um, a one off thing. And so um, I have enjoyed so much. You're getting to see some of those pictures, coaching travel softball and rec softball and all-stars and basketball. And right there, so I have the girls write scriptures. I can do all things in that mm -hmm. one through Christ. So it's like, yeah, we're on the ball field. We're shooting hoops, but it's not about this hoop getting shot. It's not about hitting this ball. It's about how am I approaching it mentally? How am I showing up and reflecting the grace and goodness of God? You know, I don't want to be one of them parents that sits there screaming and cussing out, you know what I mean, in the third inning. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, you know what right, right, like, right. So, so it's living that integrated life, and it's really, um, it's really valuable to be able to get to teach our children that while we have them at home before they're in school. So what do you think about parents that go off and things along that line? You know, they're yelling at their kids, yeah. yelling at the coaches, oh. yelling at the refs. Yeah, honey, you know, it gets to the best of us, right? You're a competitor, so right. you know how it Without is. You feel all that grinding on the inside of you, but it's a lot like Billy said. You know, you've got to find a way to respond instead of reacting. And I really mm. believe that a lot of those moments, parents are so fueled by what they don't have within them Mm. that they're looking to see that identity in their child. That's right. And, and oh, if they do good on the ball, ball field, then I'm good. You they know live what I mean? vicariously through their children. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, I mean, you, you, you got the competitive edge, Jay. Without a doubt. How do Without you navigate doubt. those difficult moments? Well, I think the main thing is you got to, I had to let go of basketball and all of that yeah. because I just knew there was no way I was going to be able to do that and keep my salvation. So I had to be well. willing to let it go. Well, honey, sometimes you just got to let it go. <laughs> like Elsa, let it go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, listen, today we hope that you have enjoyed our conversation with Billy. And we want you to walk away knowing there are spaces you need to let go. There are places you need to be a critical thinker. But most importantly, you need to keep Christ at the center that you would show up and shine like the dawn. God bless you. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.